Welcome to another edition of Real Bigfoot Encounters with Reverend Jeff. This week's story comes to us from the Redwood Coast of California. Two friends set off to investigate a Bigfoot sighting and end up getting much more than they bargained for. Let's listen to their story. My buddy Keith and I had heard a story from his Uncle Pete about a Bigfoot running around on his hunting land. Pete had been out setting up game camps for the hunting season when he started finding huge footprints and other evidence around the area that he had been watching. Pete had called Keith and I and asked us to come up and investigate it for the weekend to see if we could get the beast on camera. How could we resist? We packed up our squatching gear and we hit the road for a six hour trip. We arrived at the location on Wednesday night. We set up a light camp and just settled in to cook up some food when it started already. A tree knock rang out from the wood line behind us. Keith jumped up and grabbed the camera just in time to catch a single whoop on video. Boy, we were really excited. We had been on many investigations, but never had much action, and never in such a recently active location. We left the camera running, as well as started the digital recorder, but the rest of the night was just silent. At first light, we set out from the camp to start looking for evidence. We couldn't tell exactly where the tree knock and whoop had come from, but the direction was clear, so that was where we began our hunt for evidence. Pete had drawn us a map of the locations on the property that he had found the footprints, so we had known that we were in the right location. Keith had found an area at the tree line that was awful disturbed, looked like an animal had been pacing back and forth, and the tree in the middle of all that mess had a fresh scar on the side of it, what appears to be hit with a branch. Perhaps it was our tree knock location. We took pictures of the disturbance in the tree, but there wasn't anything near enough to call the case closed. Keith and I set out to check the other locations on the map. We had moved from game cam to game cam without much to notice, but there was a sense of being watched that followed us the whole day. From time to time, the wind would shift and that odd stink of wet dog wrapped in diaper filled with Indian food would rise up and disappear just as fast, but it seemed to follow us all day. I noticed Keith kept looking over his shoulder, and I thought that he was checking on me, but I was soon to find out the truth. Keith stopped dead in his tracks halfway down the hill, causing me to crash into his back, and we both fell to the ground. He grabbed me to keep me from rolling down further, but we were looking at the same place on the hill, and sure enough at the top, there was something tall and dark peeking from behind a tree. Keith reached for the video camera, but sadly the creature disappeared from sight before it could be turned on, but we were certain of what we saw. We decided that that was enough to continue no further. We didn't need to go through the map anymore as it was pointless. To be honest, we were both a little freaked out. So we gathered up everything and headed back to camp. Keith kept the video camera running all the way back to camp, mostly pointing behind us as we were walking, hoping to catch a glimpse of the Bigfoot. But once again, we were skunked. And not a sight, not a sound. We spent the afternoon getting ready for the night. He had heard that one tree knock was a warning and that three tree knocks was the all clear, so just at nightfall he stood up and walked over to the tree and smacked it three times with a long axe handle. The knocks rang out for miles. We had brought a bunch of chem lights to use as an attraction, so we went out and hung red glow sticks in the trees and put two gallon water jugs filled with blue ones near the wood line where the sounds had rung out the night before, and we set a camera up to record them all. Well into the night, we saw and heard nothing till we realized the crickets had gone silent. Maybe this was our chance. Keith began a Bigfoot howl, but not a moment after he started, a whoop rang out from behind us. Of course, the one place we weren't recording. He spun around and whooped right back at it, and then the trees crashed as if something had stumbled, and then something ran off in the dark. Then silence again. An hour later, a tree knock set off, just a single. Keith set off another Bigfoot call, but the response was something we were not expecting. A gunshot rang out in the dark and followed by screams of men screaming, It's over here! And in moments, our camp was filled with ten men. The situation got scary for a moment until we got Keith's Uncle Pete on the phone and the men knew Pete. Those men had been following something that had grabbed chickens from a nearby farm. They had tracked it in our direction and that's how they ended up almost shooting us. We sat down and we told them what we'd seen and heard all weekend and we told them it was a Bigfoot. And we'd seen it that afternoon. Half of them believed us, the other half just laughed and said that they were going to be a dead Bigfoot if it doesn't stop stealing chickens. 
Then the men packed up their hunt and headed back to the trucks and called it a night. A few hours later, the sun was up. We hadn't seen or heard anything the rest of the night. We checked the area for prints, but with all of the leaf litter, there just wasn't anything we could use. So we took down the chem lights and picked up the water jugs. It wasn't until we reached the truck when I noticed a handprint on the side of the water bottle. The shape sure didn't seem like it was human, and it was gigantic. But at this point, I'd smudged it, and it pretty much ruined it for anything worthwhile. Just as the last of the gear was packed up and the last door was shut, I swear I heard three tree knocks ring out from behind our camp. But that just could have been my imagination. We told Pete about the encounters and the run-in with the men, and he suggested we try again after hunting season. Perhaps he was right. For these two men, Bigfoot was all fun and games until he actually showed up. For me, this was just another real Bigfoot encounter. Thanks for listening. I'm Reverend Jeff. May the Squatch be with you.